Good morning, everyone. Uh, just I'd like uh, to welcome you all to the 2018 AGM for BBS UK. Um, my name is Richard Zimbler. I'm the uh, chairman for BBS UK. And I'm just going to pass you on now to the other tr board of trustees to introduce, them to introduce themselves to you and to tell you what roles they do. And just let people know, I, I have BBS myself and I've been coming to the conference for a, a long, long time. And I just want to say, I hope everyone has a great day and enjoys all the different interesting speeches we've got today. Um, I'm Abby Geeson and I'm the Secretary of BBS UK and I've been involved since 2015. My daughter has BBS and I first, she was first diagnosed in 2014 and I'm very glad to be here today. Hi, I'm Laura Dalswell. I'm a trustee and I'm also treasurer of the charity. I have a daughter with BBS who's hiding at the back somewhere. Uh, <laughs> and I've been involved for quite a few years now. Hello, my name is Diane Hand. I'm a trustee and also part of the fundraising team. My son George has BBS, he's 21 and he's hiding at home, which is even further away than at the back. So, <laughs> sorry about that, I'll get him here one day. Hi everybody, I'm Emma Oates. I'm a trustee and I'm also part of the fundraising team with Diane. Um, I've got Tom and Katie, they were hiding somewhere in the middle of the room, I think. Um, and I've been involved for a few years now and I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Hi, I'm Rachel. Um, I've got BBS myself. Um, this is my third conference and um, I've been observing with the committee for the last year and hoping to be nominated on today as a full trustee. Hello, I'm Margaret Sweeney Baird and I've got Juliana who's got BBS one and I've been a trustee for two years and uh, one of the big things that we've done last night was that we established the first meeting of the Scientific Advisory Board, uh, which we hope will be helping to support the research and the development um, on behalf of the BBS community. And uh, so I'll be continuing to work with that. And also on sport development, because I'm also the founder and chair of Inclusive Skating. Thank you. Hi there, uh, I'm Christian Bolton-Edenborough. This is my third conference. Uh, I've been observing uh, the committee for the last year, hoping to soon be nominated as a trustee. I'd like to follow up on Margarita's work in making inclusive sport for our members. Hello again, uh, I'm Stefan Crocker, Vice Chairman and General Sort of Fundraising Advisor Subcommittee person. So, thank you for that, uh, trustees. Uh, do we have any apologies today, Abby? No, we don't. Excellent. So now we move on to uh, matters arising from the minutes of last year's AGM. Uh, so the minutes of the last AGM held on the 22nd of April 2017 of BBS UK have previously been circulated in the conference report last year and are confirmed to be a true record of proceedings. So if I could ask Stefan to propose they're correct. Thank you. And Diane, would you? Second that the minutes Lovely, thank you. Um, so during voting, if you're a family attending here today with one or more children with BBS, you're entitled to two votes. So if one family member could raise two hands uh, during our election process. And if you're an adult with BBS, you're entitled to one vote. So please raise one hand. Thank you. Um, yeah, you can feel free to say aye or nay as well. So, so now we're going to move on to uh, the different reports for the AGM. So the first one is my chairman's report. Um, and because I'm, I'm blind, uh, Diane Hand has very kindly agreed to read my uh, report on my behalf. So I just want to say thank you very much for doing that, Diane. Okay, so this is the final chairman's report for 2017. The charity has had another busy year planning, organising and supporting our various projects and events and in raising awareness of our syndrome. The charity continues to develop and the trustees are very proud of its progress in strengthening its governance, finance and fundraising activities. I would like to thank all the volunteers who gave up their time to give support at last year's conference. The speakers for giving up their time to come and deliver some very interesting and valued talks to our members. 
To the delegates who attended and made the 2017 conference a very enjoyable time and experience for everyone. And to the staff at the Hilton Hotel who ensured that everyone was well supported, welcomed and looked after while staying at this hotel. The 2017 conference was deemed a great success with new and old members attending with a wealth of information and advice available and good times had by all. To the new families who attended last year, I hope that you enjoyed and got a lot out of your first conference and I hope it was the first of many for your family. I would like to thank the staff, honorary officers, trustees and observers on the committee for all their input, hard work and contribution to the charity over the last year. Since last year's AGM, Emma Oates has stepped down from her role as fundraising coordinator and would like to continue as a trustee in the upcoming year. And I would like to thank her for all the work she has done. Margarita Sweeney Baird is retiring from her role as a trustee from the committee and I would like to thank her too for all the hard work for the charity and wish her well for the future. Since becoming chairman I have valued my role and feel my confidence has grown step by step. I would like to continue in this role and develop my skills and attend events to raise awareness of BBS. The charity had its second adult social weekend and this was attended by 25 adults and six support staff and we are already planning to organise our third adult social weekend for later this year. The family activity weekend has been rearranged for June 2018 and will be at Whitemoor Lakes Activity Centre. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the volunteers for giving their support at our events and for their help throughout the year, as without you, it wouldn't be possible for these events to be as accessible as they are to our members. We continue to be active in raising awareness of bardet beadle syndrome, and this has entailed attending various different events, such as the Rare Disease Day in London, Site Village in Birmingham and Manchester, and Tonya represented the team at the Cambridge Rare Disease Summit. The charity has now formed a scientific advisory board, and this is to provide greater support in the research of BBS and will be a useful mechanism to assist and collaborate with others in the national and international communities. We value and welcome the board's founding members who are Professor Phil Beals, Dr Elizabeth Forsyth and Dr Helen May Samira and we look forward to working more closely with them. Our financial position needs to continue to strengthen and there has been a lot of hard work in developing fundraising initiatives. We have made good progress with the CIO conversion and at the end of last year the Board of Trustees decided to recruit an administration officer to support the charity with its governance and projects. The clinics are being well attended with numbers continuing to grow and networks between patients being formed. I would like to thank all of the volunteers and clinicians at all of the hospitals for the continued smooth running of the multidisciplinary clinics. I would also like to thank Tonya, Angela and Amy for the smooth restructure of the running of the support services and for all their dedicated support to the Board of Trustees and charity projects as well. I would like to finish by thanking all the members, their friends, families and the public for making such a big effort with all, our, all of the fundraising that you do throughout the year and the donations as without your support, many of the services that we provide wouldn't be able to carry on in the way they do. Thank you, Richard. Okay, now for the um, financial review of the charity. So, <clears throat> if in your um, trustees report and accounts on pages 17, 18 and 19 are the reports if anybody wants to follow along. So income during 2017 was just over 51,000 compared to almost 64,000 in 2016 and that includes a restricted grant of 5,000 pounds. Expenditure during 2017. No was 40, just over 40,000 compared to almost 31,000 in 2016. Therefore, during 2017, we can see that income has reduced and expenditure has increased. 
During 2016, BBS UK received £29,000 in donations and fundraising. However, in 2017, this had fallen to just over 20,000. And similarly, in 2016, we have marathon runners who raised almost £6,000 compared to just £50 in 2017. And although 2017 has seen bike rides raise a total of £6,500. Income from our friends scheme, of which details are available on reception, has increased. And this is an important income stream for BBS UK and its regular monthly amounts, to, which helps the charity to plan ahead. We'd like to thank all those of you who have signed up to this scheme. And if anyone else wishes to sign up, please come and chat to me. Um, and the Friends of BBS UK leaflets are available, are available at the front. Do share them with family and friends and anyone else who might like to support us. Expenditure remains well controlled, <clears throat> although the cost of the annual conference is the largest item of expenditure at £14,500, and naturally the costs rise each year. Other one-off costs in 2017 have been the purchase of new promotional stock and merchandise, and the costs associated with the CIO conversion. As of the 31st of December 2017, the charity had total funds of £82,101. Of this, 13,648 is restricted and relates to specific grants which will be spent in 2018. A realistic and prudent budget has been set for 2018, which will enable the core activities and objectives of the charity to be carried out. As ever, the trustees are mindful of the uncertainty of the future financial situation. Last year, we spoke about the need for the charity to build up reserves to ensure its long-term sustainability. This need still remains and is one of the priorities. Apart from the grant, which is restricted for a specific project, the charity receives no external funding and relies solely on the committed and ongoing support of its members. The committee would like to take this opportunity to offer huge thanks and extend our appreciation to all our regular donors and those that freely give up time to fundraise. <coughs> Excuse me. And we do have a reserves policy in place, which is on page 15, if anybody wanted to have a look at that. So, as I mentioned, total funds at 31st of December 2017 are £82,101. If we take off our restricted fund and all our designated fund for committed expenditure, that leaves us with just £27,310 we started this financial year with. Are there any questions about the accounts? I am around this afternoon, I'll be around in the lobby area if anybody does have any questions. Um, so now we just need to vote to approve the 2017 accounts. So all in favour, raise your hand. <laughs> and anyone against, raise your hand. No, you've got that. And we also just need to appoint the auditors as well. So we'd like to propose Michael Bannister of Fraser Bannister Financials Limited, who we've used the last few years and knows our charity well. Um, we'd like to appoint them to act as our independent examiner for the coming financial year. So all those in favour, raise your hand or say aye. aye. <laughs> uh, anybody against? Um, okay, I think that's me done, isn't it? Fabulous, thank you. Um, so we're now uh, coming to a quite important part of the annual general meeting, which is the resolutions that we need to put forward to you. These are all regarding the CIO conversion. So at the moment we are an unincorporated charity and we want to convert to a charitable incorporated organisation. This gives the charity more protection and it's kind of bringing us up to date to charity legal status in 2018. Um, so these sound very formal and they are important resolutions. Um, I try to put together as much information as possible in the invites um, to inform you all of the process and hopefully answer any questions that you might have. And our draft constitution uh, was made available on the website. So I'm not sure if any of you do have any questions about our conversion before I go ahead with asking the resolutions to be put forward. Does anyone have any questions at all? No. I know it is complicated and it kind of sounds scary to all of us, but um, it is a straightforward process. 
Um, so the resolutions that I need to put forward to you today um, are... Uh, so the first one is uh, to ask you members to authorise the trustees to dissolve the existing unincorporated charity in accordance with Clause 14 of the BBS UK Constitution once the registration of the new charitable incorporated organisation has been approved by the Charity Commission. So this will only happen once approval has been granted by the Charity Commission and it's really just a paper exercise of closing one organisation down when the new one begins. So if I could ask you uh, to vote in favour, all, all in favour, please raise your hands. Thank you. And anyone against? Thank you very much. So the next resolution is to authorise our trustees to transfer the assets and liabilities of the existing unincorporated charity to the new CIO following approval. So this will be our cash and our accounts and any assets will be just, just basically transferred from one to the other. So all in favour, please raise your hands. Thank you. And anyone against? Thank you. So with the new CIO constitution having been circulated, we would like to ask members to accept the terms and conditions detailed in this draft and to authorise the trustees to apply to the Charity Commission for registration on the basis of this new draft constitution. So all in favour, please raise your hands. And anyone against? And we would like to assure you that the aims and objectives of the new, uh, new charity are exactly the same as our old. So nothing will change. We do have, obviously, regulations and rules within the new constitution, which have been brought up to date and have been thoroughly discussed by trustees. We just want to assure you that nothing in terms of our aims and objectives will change. Uh, we also need to ask members to authorise the trustees to approve any further changes to the draft constitution which may be required by the Charity Commission following submission in order to achieve registration of the new CIO. So if I could ask members in favour to raise your hands. Thank you. And anyone against? Thank you. Uh, and the last one is to allow BBS UK trustees who are office in the time of registration to serve as trustees of the new charitable incorporated organisation until they are due to retire by rotation in accordance with Clause 15 of the new draft CIO constitution. So all in favour, please raise your hands. Thank you. And anyone against, please raise your hands. So I am available all afternoon. So if anyone does have any questions that they'd like to ask about our conversion, please do come and find me. Thank you very much for your time. So now we're going to move on to the um, electing of trustees and honorary officers for the committee. Uh, so one half of the membership shall retire annually, but shall be eligible for re-election. The members so to retire being those who have been in the longest in office since the last election, but not reckoning ex officio at members. Emma Oates and Margarita Sweeney Bird are therefore retiring during the AGM. Of the current committee members, Margarita Sweeney Bird has decided not to stand again for re-election to another term. Diane Hand has a further year to serve of her current term, and Emma Oates is eligible to stand for re-election to a third term. All in favour of Emma Oates being elected for a term, please raise your hand. All right, thank you very much. And anyone against, please raise your hand. No nays, lovely. Um, Rachel Foley is eligible to stand for election after observing for a year. Um, all in favour of Rachel coming on as a trustee, please raise your hand. Excellent. All those against? And Christian Bolton Edinburgh is again eligible to stand for election after reserving for the board for 12 months. So again, all, all in favour, raise your hand. <laughs> Anyone against? Uh, 
Uh, so now we come to appointment of the honorary officers. So of the current officers, Richard Zimbler, who's chair, Stefan Crocker, who's vice chair, Laura Dowswell, who's treasurer, and me, Abby Geeson, who's secretary, have all been nominated and are eligible to be re-elected. We received no further nominations um, for honorary positions and can therefore be re-elected re unopposed. All in favour of this, uh, raise your hand. Anyone against? Yeah. So uh, we now move on to any other business. And I'd first like to, uh, under any other business, uh, welcome Laura Bennett on to the, uh, to, as the administration, um, of, is it officer? Yeah, officer for BBS UK. I'd like to welcome her to uh, working alongside the, the trustees and uh, the staff and I uh, hope you've settled in well to your role and I just want to wish you good luck for your role and hope you enjoy working alongside us. Do you know where Laura is? is she yeah, is Laura in the room? Do you want to stand up, Laura? So, does anyone else have any other business for the AGM? No. Thank you very much. So, I'd just like to say now, thank you all for attending the 2018 AGM, and I would like to close the AGM now. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you.